Brain Structure The brain is divided into symmetrical left and right hemispheres and the brainstem. The first part of the brainstem is the medulla oblongata. There is the pons above it, then the midbrain and the largest part of the brainstem, the interbrain. Sometimes the cerebellum is also included in the brainstem. In the medulla oblongata, there are centers of reflexes providing blood circulation, respiration, digestion, and centers of protective reflexes, blinking, coughing, vomiting, sneezing. The cerebellum is located behind the medulla oblongata. The cerebellum receives information from muscles, tendons, and motor centers of the cerebellar cortex. This allows the cerebellum to control balance, muscle tone, and posture. The white matter of the midbrain contains the nuclei that regulate muscle tone. Through the midbrain pass arcs of reflexes connected with the retention of posture, straight line movement, body rotation, descent, and ascent. The thalamus and hypothalamus are both located in the intermediate brain, diencephalon. The thalamus is involved in the regulation of complex movements, wakefulness and sleep, as well as in the formation of emotions. Above the thalamus is the epiphysis, a small endocrine gland. The hypothalamus controls the work of the autonomic nervous system, regulates metabolism, ensures the constancy of the internal environment of the body. The hypothalamus is connected with the pituitary gland, through which the internal secretion glands are controlled. The cerebrum is divided into two hemispheres connected by the corpus callosum. The gray matter forms the cerebral cortex, which covers the large hemispheres in a thin layer. Neurotransmitters are chemical substances that transmit signals between nerve cells, neurons, or between neurons and other cells of the body. They are secreted from the nerve ending of a neuron and act on the receptors of the next neuron or target cell, thereby transmitting a nerve signal. Neurons that release neurotransmitters are called presynaptic neurons. Neurons that receive neurotransmitter signals are called postsynaptic neurons. Here are the most essential neurotransmitters and the roles they fulfill. Acetylcholine is responsible for muscle stimulation, the activation of motor neurons, and is involved in various areas of the brain related to learning, memory, or arousal in charge of the transition from vigilance to dream states. Dopamine. It is related to pleasure and feelings of relaxation. Dopamine's main functions include the regulation of memory, learning, and it has an important role in decision-making. Motivation and curiosity are also related to this neurotransmitter. Noradrenaline. It is also known as the stress hormone because of its dual role as a hormone and as a neurotransmitter. It is a type of neurotransmitter that has an excitatory function which is responsible for activating the sympathetic nervous system. Among its functions is also the regulation of physical and mental arousal states. Gamma aminobutyric acid, GABA. This neurotransmitter fulfills the inhibitory function of the nervous system, preventing overexcitement to avoid reactions such as anxiety or fear. Moreover, it is an important ally in the fight against anxiety. Serotonin. It is also known as the happy hormone. So it fulfills two functions in our body, as a hormone and as a neurotransmitter. Serotonin plays an important role in the digestive process, in the regulation of body heat, and also has a great influence on sexual desire. Glutamate. It is related to the neurotransmitter GABA and is most abundant in the central nervous system. This type of neurotransmitter is associated with memory and learning functions, as well as more complex cognitive functions. A synapse is the place where neurons exchange information. It is not a physical component of a cell, but rather the name of the gap between two cells, a presynaptic and a postsynaptic cells. There are two types of reactions possible at interneuronal synapses, chemical reactions or electrical reactions. Neuroplasticity is the ability of neural networks in the brain to change through growth and reorganization. Other terms for neuroplasticity are brain plasticity and neuronal plasticity. The two main areas of neuroplasticity are neurogenesis, generation of new neurons, and activity-dependent synaptic plasticity. The neurogenesis rate is high during embryonic development and early childhood, but declines sharply in late adolescence and adulthood. Activity-dependent plasticity 
which can be functional or structural, is at the core of neuroplasticity and is essential for higher level functions such as learning, memory, recovery, and adaptive behavior. These changes can be short-term or long-term. Without a doubt, neuroplasticity is very important as we cannot grow, learn, and adapt to our environment without it. And quite importantly, it also plays a vital role in adapting to painful conditions and sensory deficits. Changes in brain plasticity are associated with numerous disorders, including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, anxiety, depression, and others. The plasticity of the nervous system can be protected and strengthened by using approaches that reduce stress and inflammation. For example, yoga, teaching, awareness training, antioxidants, and physical exercises. Neuroimaging is a system of modern methods of studying the brain, which allows to visualize in a graphic form the peculiarities of its vital structure and functioning. There are many methods of neuroimaging. Computed tomography of the head and spine allows to obtain a single slice image of the skull bones, brain structures, ventricular system of the brain, etc. Modern CT scanners allow you to select layers from 2 to 10 mm thick at a scanning speed of one layer of two, five seconds with instant reproduction of the image in either black and white or in color, NMR tomography and positron emission tomography, PEAT. In NMR tomography, image acquisition is based on the determination of hydrogen nuclei density distribution in the brain matter and on the detection of some of their physical characteristics, in particular, relaxation time. The peculiarities of NMR tomographic images include the fact that they allow obtaining not only anatomical, but also physico-chemical information. Ventriculography is based on injecting air or contrast agents directly into the ventricles of the brain. On craniograms, only the ventricles of the brain are imaged. Angiography is an X-ray of the brain vessels after injecting a contrast agent into them. Angiography is used to diagnose various vascular lesions of the brain, anomalies of cerebral vessels, and tumors. Diffuse optical imaging, DOI, is a medical imaging modality that uses infrared light to image the human body. The technology measures the optical absorption of hemoglobin and relies on this spectrum as a function of oxygen saturation. Comparative neuroscience studies the nervous and sensory systems of animals and people widely differing in regard to their position in the phylogenetic system and ranging from those at the basis of metazoan evolution to those most highly developed. Taking evolution for granted, comparative neuroscience is interested in the structures and general principles underlying nervous processes and functions throughout the animal kingdom. It is likewise interested in the particularities and diversity of animal species and taxa adapted to vastly differing lifestyles and habitats. Clinical neuroscience is a branch of neuroscience that focuses on the scientific study of fundamental mechanisms that underlie diseases and disorders of the brain and central nervous system. It seeks to develop new ways of conceptualizing and diagnosing such disorders and ultimately of developing novel treatments. The object of study of clinical neuroscience is the brain of a sick person. Cognitive neuroscience is the science that studies the relationship between the brain and cognitive processes. Cognitive processes are everything we do when we think, feel, and interact with the world. These include things like perception, attention, memory, learning, problem solving, and creativity. Cognitive neuroscience uses neuroimaging techniques, described above, to look at how the brain is activated during cognitive processes. Cognitive neuroscience is essential for discovering physical confirmation of theoretical properties of the psyche, fulfills the need of neuroscientists for more detailed models of the brain and behavior, and helps to discover links between brain pathology and behavior. Behavioral neuroscience studies the relationship between brain activity, behavior, and the environment. Based on experimental data, neuroscientists investigate the factors that control and coordinate processes such as perception, movement, reaction, or decision-making. Research in this field helps to solve many social problems faced by society through understanding, controlling, and predicting human behavior. In addition, such research contributes to the neurobiology of addiction, sleep, aging, autism, bipolar disorder, epilepsy, etc. 
Neuroethics is a discipline on the borderline between neuroscience and philosophy. This is the name of the ethics of neuroscience, an interdisciplinary field of research that studies the impact of modern neuroscience on human consciousness, the development of biomedicine, political, legal, and moral spheres of human life. Neuroethics includes a wide range of subjects. Effects on the brain and memory, stem cell treatment, patients with impaired consciousness, neurological procedures, and more.